My name is Marcelo Dantas. I'm a curator. I'm based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I specialize in contemporary art. I do a lot of monographic shows with uh, major artists from all over the world, and I do some. Uh, and I have a strong focus in developing new works and public artworks, which is another aspect of my uh, practice. My background is multidisciplinary to start with. Uh, I have studied. I began studying diplomacy, and then I went into study film and television, and then history of art, and then interactive telecommunications, which was the beginning of what new media was. And so my background is very diversified, and my interest uh, in art came a lot with uh, the video artists back in the 80s. You know, the people that were, you know, uh, defining a new language for art. So I start already in a multidisciplinary field with Bill Viola, Gary Hill, uh, Namjoon Pike, Shreen Ashat, lots of people that were, in a way, you know, experimenting what the boundaries of the medium was. And another aspect of my practice that is very important is that I produce and curate. And this makes a tremendous difference because I do have the key and the means to make the work happen. I do not depend on institutions or on, you know, I deal with institutions and I develop the work for institutions, but I do it, we do it as a team, ourselves. And, and we, uh, so we understand the needs and, and what it takes in the process of making the art. Uh, it's not only about selecting and contextualizing, it's also about selecting and contextualizing, but it's a lot about uh, building, uh, creating, uh, generating the experience. You know, my <laughs> experience has been that uh, whenever the, the books about it are written, it's probably because that knowledge is already obsolete. That's normally what I feel. I mean, very seldomly somebody is able to organize a certain knowledge of something of the present that refers to the present. And, and the best experience is actually living it. So um, I have a, a tendency that is, uh, I like to go places. I like to see things in the making. I like to go to studios. I like to see, I'm more interested in studios than in art fairs. I'm more interested in the factories that make it than anything else. And, and whenever the works usually reach the museums, that's the time in which they are no longer being created. That's the time in which they are already being frozen in time. So I'm interested in this other side of things, in which the things are not yet born, or when they are forgotten. I'm also interested in that. The things that were forgotten in the past, that never left the studio, that could never really uh, occur because the technology wasn't ready, because the money wasn't there, the context was not uh, developed. So that's also a, uh, a type of work that I'm interested in, reviving in non-existing work. Sure. I mean, there are many no's, uh, but the, the advantage is that I, if I get a no, I can, because of my independence, I can still try for another yes somewhere else, as opposed to when you are locked in, in into one institution, a no is a no. Uh, a no is maybe, maybe just the door. I mean, many projects that I have done have been refused, and because they were refused, they happened in a much better way later on, in a, in a, in a better context in which people did understand. And also, you have to realize that people change. So you have, and, and pe most people don't know what they want. So we have to find a way to convince them that, that this is a good path. So you have to be, you have to stick to your vision somehow and push that vision in because you're going to find many no's on the way. You're going to find no's, you're going to find things that will you know, uh, turn you back, but you will have to find, you have to think that you, your trip, your, tr your road, your journey is, uh, is one that you believe in. In many ways you find an audience that is not prepared for that work and you have to find a way to connect to that audience. You have to find a way to translate what that poetic element that comes from context will resonate in a completely different context. This is the, the hard bridge to make. 
and without distorting completely what the work is, work's intention is. So you have to learn about both, you know, you have to learn about your receiver end and your sender's end and find that many times, this, in many ways this is usually surprising for the artist, that there is a way to read their work that they have not realized by putting it in a completely different context. And also curators tend to cipher, and my challenge is to decipher. You know, I, I don't want to cipher a work that is already ciphered. Two layers of ciphering is too much. I want to decipher. I want to make it accessible. My, you know, my tendency has been to make very popular shows, which I am proud of, by talking, by seducing, by sharing the, the vision, by showing a enthusiasm that usually uh, is contagious. Uh, I'm going to quote something that Nam Jun Paik said to me in the 1980s. You have to be number one, but to be number one, you have to invent your own race.